Yeah, for the videos. Uh, next up, we have Steve Trimble. Steve Trimble is a retired teacher who is still reach, uh, researching and writing local history for the Almanac, Ramsey County History, and his neighborhood newspaper in Dayton's Bluff on the east side. He is currently writing a book of daily history of St. Paul. Please welcome Steve. Glad to be here. This may be different than the other people because this particular thing I'm going to do is to read a edited portion of a reminiscence that was written by a man that I knew named Mike Sancelli. And I, he's got like a 180 page reminiscence down at the Historical Society that no one ever reads. So I thought I'd get him into the Ramsey County History Magazine in the Growing Up in St. Paul. I'm going to pass this around because it has pictures of him and what have you and make sure it gets back to me. <laughs> so this is from his reminiscences or a portion of them. He grew up in Swede Hollow over on the east side of St. Paul right off of Payne Avenue. <clears throat> and the story begins after they have returned from a short time in Montana, which turned out to be a disaster, as he points out, that they didn't like it at all. But when they came back, there was a house for sale in Sweet Hollow from a guy who they say got in trouble with the local bootleggers because he was bootlegging his own wine. So he had to flee back to Italy. And so they were able to buy his house for $20, but I mean, that, was, <laughs> that was in those days. My father had to borrow the whole $20 the house cost. The friends and neighbors gave us what extra furniture they could spare, and we started our new life in Sweet Hollow. As I stood in the yard one morning after we moved in, I took a long look around the hollow. We were back home, and we owned our own home. The kids were playing at the end of the big bridge. You could hear the chickens and roosters dogs running around excitedly. And I'm going to read this. It'll sound like dialect, but it's exactly how he wrote it. So, uh, My father was digging a hole in the corner of the yard. <clears throat> what you going to put there, Pa? I asked. This is going to be the flag of hole. This is my property <laughs> in America, he said. <laughs> the flag would fly on all proper flag days without fail because my father memorized them all by heart. What a place to be poor, I thought to myself, listening to the chatter of happy kids, happy chickens, excited dogs, and mothers talking to each other across one side of the hollow to the other. I carried the happy thought back into the house with me as I entered the screen door. Sweet Hollow is a great place for playing, no traffic to worry about. One class of people, even if there were different at nationalities than there were in Sweet Hollow. I would witness an old Italian way of making wine. I walked into the front door of my house one evening and there were two Italians kneeling by my father. They were trimming his toenails and washing his feet. Then they picked him up and carried him to the Barilla's front yard. They stood him up in a great big wooden half barrel. Two men would dump crates of dark blue grapes in the barrel. My father was mashing the grapes with his bare feet and singing at the top of his voice songs of Italy. <laughs> we weren't going to live high on the hog with my father getting his old job back. The railroads were not paying back good of wages, but we were able to afford the necessities of living. We got into the old Italian way of life in Sweet Hollow. In the day, the Italian ladies would visit each other, and after supper, the men would do the same. My Uncle Martin would introduce the Hatadaga to the Sancellis. I didn't know what to expect, being that I had never heard of it. He went out and brought the wieners and buns, and then came in from the kitchen with a large pan full of boiling water and wieners. He had mustard and ketchup ready. He set the pan in the middle of the table, and the Sanchellis went American for supper. Everybody liked it. 
So every Wednesday, we had Hatadagas. <laughs> My father didn't care too much for the buns, so he used Italian bread instead. Like the other Italians in the hollow, we started to raise chickens, rabbits, and even had a pig. I remember the morning Mr. Yacaldo plunged the knife into the pig's heart. The pig screamed, and although I felt a little pang, I knew it had to be done. My mother fried pieces of fresh pork that were edible while the men continued to skin the pig. The carcass was finally hung in the shed to cool. When the younger kids got up, it was all over, and after a few tears, they forgot about the pig that they had given a name. We had no playground except for the old lot. Nobody had a ball or bat, so we played around the railroad tracks, the binder dump, in the street, or played on the wagons parked in the empty lot. We would also go to the freight yards near 4th Street and see if there was anything good to eat in the fruit cars. They sure hauled a lot of cabbage in those days. Those days. It seemed like we ate cabbage five times a week. Holidays, they are not what I had always looked forward to when I was younger. In our days, there were no presents. It was the routine that we cherished. Going to midnight mass, singing Christmas carols in English and Italian, coming home and continue eating codfish, nuts and peanuts. And we did a lot of visiting the neighbors in Sweet Hollow, more so because it was like a little village all by itself. My father never gave up on his singing, even when he was sick. He still gave it his best when he was in the mood. Every Sunday night, before he would come in and go to bed, he would go out to the middle of the big bridge, which was over Phelan Creek that ran through Sweet Hollow, and sing America the Beautiful. I still remember the time when Mrs. Steele, who lived down at the other end of the hollow, commented to me one day, I was telling my kids it was time to go to bed one Sunday night when my son Donald piped up and said, Oh no, Ma, Tony Sancelli didn't sing America yet. <laughs> so the voice of Sweet Hollow also became the timepiece on Sunday night. Mike Sancelli.